This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring retired FBI Special Agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. The trial of Karen Reed, it continues on and it continues to get more and more uh, confusing by the day. Uh, each side presenting their case and uh, each side uh, getting uh, more and more dug in to their narrative. Joining me to discuss, Jennifer Coffendaffer, retired FBI special agent. Here we are, another week into it and a lot that has been going on. What has been some of the standout stuff for you, Jen? Well, I think the standout moment for the prosecution uh, was certainly the testimony of Carrie Roberts. Uh, mm-hmm. Carrie Roberts is a family friend of the O'Keefe, so she has no affiliation with any of the Alberts, uh, you know, any folks that uh, would ever be involved in the third party culprit. And for me, the biggest thing she said was, and I'm going to paraphrase a bit, but at, at exactly five o'clock in the morning, she recalled that Karen Reed called her and said, Carrie, 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 John is dead. Mm -hmm. That to me was a very impactful moment because it was before they had ever gone on their venture to find him. Yeah. Uh, So this is just, to me, the most impactful testimony. The rest of her testimony was so strong uh, that the defense did not even cross-examine Carrie. No, they did not. That and was very huge. interesting. That was very telling as well. Yeah, she they they knew that there was no. I, I mean, I believe that the reason they didn't cross uh, was because they knew there was no way they were going to implicate her information, and they didn't want it repeated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there, there's been so much. Uh, Jen McCabe also on the stand this week. We'll take a look at some of those clips here in just a little bit. But uh, text messages going through that, uh, and there's been a lot of them. What have uh, you uh, you gleaned from all of those uh, exchanges that they're now uh, exposing out there to the world? So in regard to the text messages between Brian Higgins and, and Karen Reed, and of course they're going on right now as you and I are speaking. Yeah. Uh, but I listened to about the first 50 pages, <laughs> 50 pages. <laughs> um, and I think we were on page 50, uh, yeah. uh, something like that. In any event, uh, you know, very damning for motive. Um, mm-hmm. It's interesting that I, I am often reached out to by many people that are sort of on the fence still They're, mm-hmm. you know, kind of got caught up in this very recently. They don't have any opinion and they've been very a little bit sided, I think, toward uh, the possibility that she was hit by a plow, believe it or not, that mm-hmm. people are sort of thinking that now. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, several people have just said, oh, my gosh, the motive she wanted out. She's unhappy. She was going after this ATF agent. So I think that it's hitting home with some people. I don't think I, I think it was quite a moment. And in fact, I believe uh, Karen Reed's parents were caught on tape. There's a camera still uh, that is being shown, and it was when they were in sidebar, and I believe the sidebar was discussing just this, Mm -hmm. whether these uh, text messages would be able to be introduced or not. And they're being introduced in their totality for the sole purpose of motive. And you could see her parents, uh, particularly her father, just exacerbated. Um, because I think that everyone knew if those text messages got in now, people would see the motive. So for the it, first time. is this making it a lot more clear as to why this is a murder charge and not a, 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 a hit and run or a vehicular homicide? I think it's it's a small part of it. Mm-hmm. I think the big piece is going to be the uh, demonstrative evidence from the car itself Mm -hmm. in terms of how fast it was going, if it continued after the hit occurred, Mm -hmm. things like that. I, I think that that's why it was charged, but this, this doesn't help. Yeah. Uh, It certainly lends itself toward that. Well, and and I mean, one can want out of a relationship. I mean, it happens all the time and they don't kill their partner. Uh, Are, are, where are you on, on this? Are you leaning that this was an intentional, I'm trying to hit him 
uh, with my vehicle, or is this just all really horrible timing? She's really kind of ready to get out of this relationship. They're get into a fight, and it's an accident. Like, still not truly intending to 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 kill him by any means, but it's just yeah, she wanted out, and and this horrible accident happens at that that happenstance in time. My uh, I, my jury's still out. I still want to hear all the evidence. Mm-hmm. You know, I've always said there's a there's a big difference between uh, evidence that is uh, shown in a court of law and the uh, jury, what the jury finds mm-hmm. in terms of whether the person is convicted or not. Right. So many people who commit crimes may not be convicted of everything they're charged with in sure. a court of law. And for me, uh, my jury is, is still out on whether the second degree murder charge will be proven or or disproven. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that I think that's still so much up in the air. But gosh, you know, seeing uh, all those uh, those texts and such, it's very interesting. Sick of the ads? We are too. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.